The Tour de France attracts 12 million spectators in a typical year's race, and every day, 3.5 million TV viewers are watching in an average of 190 countries. Viewers watch intently as their favorite cyclists race to, race to the finish line and are amazed at the speed in which they go. It is with the help of the many body systems, primarily the cardio cardiovascular and respiratory systems, that the cyclist is able to successfully complete the race. During any type of activity, our body must utilize all of its systems in order to complete the task at hand. To begin with, in order for the cyclist to start the race, he must use his legs to pedal. In order to do so, the nervous, muscular, and skeletal systems must work together to tell the body to pedal. As the brain, the main part of the central nervous system, receives impulses from the peripheral nervous system, it sends out motor neurons to the muscle cells in order to force the muscles to contract. The main muscles cyclists utilize while pedaling are the quadriceps and hamstrings in the upper legs, as well as the gastrocnemius and soleus in the calf. These muscles, in coordination with the abdominals, pectorals, and deltoids in the upper body, contract and extend in order to make the cyclist pedal the bike. As the cyclist pedals along the course, they are able to support themselves with the help of their skeletal system. The many bones within the body, including the femur, tibia, fibula, and pelvis, carry the weight of the body. Also, the joints within the bones, such as the hip and shoulder, ball and socket joints, allow the legs and arms to rotate and move. The hidden joints in the knees and elbows make the bending of the legs and arms possible, which allows the cyclist to pedal. Without the skeletal system, the muscles would not be able to be supported, and the internal organs would not be protected. The interaction between the muscular and skeletal systems is vital in the case of the Tour de France cyclists. The muscles are connected to the bones by tendons, and it is with the help of the muscles that the bones move accordingly. In order for the cyclist's muscles to move, however, it is vital that they receive oxygen from the blood. Blood is pumped throughout the body with the help of the cardiovascular system. This system is composed of the heart and all the blood vessels within the body. By circulating blood, it maintains an internal environment that nourishes all cells in the body. Within the blood, there are red and white blood cells. The red cells contain hemoglobin, which transport the oxygen and carbon dioxide. The white blood cells, however, protect the body against infection and are a part of the immune system. Say, for example, if the cyclist were to get sick before the Tour de France, it would be the white blood cells that would be helping to fight off the infection. As the blood goes through the body, it carries waste matter and carbon dioxide away from the blood cells, delivering the CO2 to the lungs and the waste to the kidneys. The arteries are the blood vessels responsible for carrying blood away from the heart and have this thick elastic walls that contain smooth muscle fibers. The vessels that carry the blood back into the heart are the veins, which are thinner than arter arteries. There are also veins and arteries within the main part of the cardiovascular system, the heart. The heart is made of muscle tissues called myocardium, and the rate at which it beats adjusts in response to increased or decreased physical activity. In the case of the cyclist, as he picks up speed, the heart must work harder to pump more blood out to the muscles. Within the heart, however, there are many chambers and valves that allow the blood to circulate. The deoxygenated blood that enters the heart with CO2 and waste matter enters through two large blood vessels, the vena cava. Once inside the right atrium, the blood is transferred to the right ventricle and then into the lungs. Here, it releases the carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen that is in the lungs from inhalation. This oxygenated blood goes back into the left atrium and through the left ventricle and finally out the aorta into the rest of the body. Within the heart, there are also valves which limit the amount of blood flowing through the chambers of the heart. However, in order for the blood to become oxygenated, the respiratory system must use the oxygen that the cyclist gained through the inhalation of air. The breathing process is a result of pressure differences between the lungs and the outside environment. When the cyclist inhales, the diaphragm and muscles between its ribs contract, which expands the chest cavities and its lungs. This lowers the pressure in the lungs and air naturally flows into them. When the cyclist exhales, the opposite occurs as the volume in the chest cavity decreases and the oxygen flows outside of his body. This basic breathing process that occurs in the cyclist is linked to a larger process known as respiration, which can be divided into two parts, internal and external. While internal respiration is the exchange of gases between blood and body cells, external respiration is the exchange of oxygen and CO2 that takes place between air and the blood and the lungs. They are both necessary for the cyclist to survive. 
The lung is the principal organs of the respiratory system and where external respiration takes place. Air that is inhaled through the nose and goes through the navel cavity moves into the lungs through the trachea and bronchi. Once the air is in the bronchi, it subdivides into a network of tubes known as bronchioles. Gas exchanges then take place when oxygen and CO2 diffuse across the capillary and alveolar walls at the end of the bronchioles. It is through these many systems within the body that the cyclist is effectively able to breathe, pedal, and survive as he races for towards the finish line. Each of these systems are connected, and without one, none of the others would be able to function.